Welcome back to some smooth sailing in Trig. Today we're going to take it nice and simple. We're going to just some, solve some Trig equations. So there's not too much new stuff, just using some old stuff. All right, so we're just going to jump right into an example to see what this is all about. So all the, all the examples are going to look something like this. Solve sine of x equals something. This is the first type of example, the most basic example. Um, and what's the dealio here? So what does the word solve mean? That means find values for x that work. Where what does work mean? Where the answer makes sense. Um, and actually not any values, but all the values that work. So how can I figure out what x is if I'm given this equation? Well, it's not like algebra. So it's not like you can do something like, oh, I'll just get x alone, where I'll, so I'll divide by these three letters, and I'll do this. OK, that doesn't make any sense. Don't do that. Um, instead, we have to think a little bit and just realize that an equation is really just a question. That's all it is. So let's think about the question. This is saying what angles make sine b one half? That's what this question is really saying. And it's very similar to the inverse problem from last time, but a little bit different. So for inverses, we also asked this type of question, except it wasn't plural. So now it's plural, meaning we're looking for every angle that works, not just a specific chosen one, whereas for inverses, we're just looking for a specific answer. So we're looking for all the angles that make sine of x be a half. Well, I can draw a handy picture for that. So here's a half. And I know that there's, at the very least, I know that there's this angle, which is pi over 6, that makes the y value be a half. But I also know that there's one over here. And that would be um, 5 pi over 6. So if I want to solve this guy, what's x? Well, x is pi over 6, but it's also 5 pi over 6 because of this picture. But actually, there's even more answers because what if I start with pi over 6 here? But then I rotate a complete rotation, and I get back to pi over 6 plus 2 pi. That's a full rotation. Um, so that also works. Um, but by the same logic, I could just rotate again. And I could say pi over 6 plus 2 pi plus another 2 pi also works. So that means that these are other values of x that also work. But hopefully you're starting to notice that I could go on forever. So what we need is a way to summarize all of these answers that are actually just basically pi over 6, except rotated around. So how do we say that? So instead, we write this. It looks a bit fancy. x equals pi over 6 is like your base answer. And then what we do is we say plus 2 pi to mean um, that if I rotate once, it's the same answer. But then I stick this other variable, k, here. 
So what this is saying is that any number of rotations starting at pi over six also works. So you say this to mean that pi over six is an answer, but so is every rotation of pi over six. Um, and it also includes backwards rotation. So what that means is you have to say what K is. So K is the number of rotations. So if, when K is zero, that means you're not doing any extra rotations and you're just back at pi over six, for example. Um, if you do k equals one, then you're at one rotation of one extra rotation of pi over six. And if you do two, that means you've done two rotations, which means you've done uh, two pi plus another two pi, which is four pi. But you can also do negative rotations. And that just means you start at pi over six and then you rotate um, backwards. So you get minus two pi. So to conclude, you just say x equals pi over six plus two pi k. And then you say k equals negative one, zero, one, dot, dot, dot. And that means that you include all rotations. Okay, so that means we have one answer here, but the same logic holds for this other answer, x equals five pi over six. So we do the same exact thing. Five pi over six works, but so does any rotation of pi, five pi over six. So these are your two answers here. And again, you have to say k equals these numbers, that just mean numbers of rotations. Okay, so that's how all the answers in this section will be. The only difference between that example and the other ones is how to get to those answers, but it's all the same idea. So let's go through another. So how about this one? Solve negative five equals five squared two times cosine theta for all theta. Same idea, except we don't just have a trig thing equal to a number, we got numbers all over the place. So there's like a pre-step to what we did before, which is first get cosine theta alone. Um, because once it's alone, then I can ask what angle makes cosine be that number. So that's what we got to do first. So I'm going to divide by five square root of two on both sides to isolate it. And then it looks a bit weird, but if I reduce it, it starts to look more familiar. So this becomes negative root two over two equals cosine of theta. So now I'm asking what angles, what are all the angles making cosine, AKA the X value be negative root two over two. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, all right, so that's a question we can solve by drawing. So what are the two angles that make that happen? It's, it's a pi over four type angle. So it's gonna be three pi over four and five pi over four. So theta equals those two numbers, those two angles, but also any rotation of those two angles will also make cosine be negative root two over two. So all those other angles also work. So then you just write that to include all the rotations. Okay, so that's your answer. Uh, moving on, let's see, how do I slightly complicate it? How about like this? Sine of 
pi over 12x equals a half. So what's going on here? This time, instead of just sine of x equaling a half, we got sine of pi over 12 times x equaling a half. So what does this mean? Well, what we're going to do is we just think of the entire inside. So it could be much more complicated than this, but if it was, it would still work the same. We're just going to think of the entire inside as an angle. Um, because what's going on is that in total, we want to know when sine is one half because it's still sine of something equals a half. And then once we enter this question, we'll be able to deal with the inside. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, when is sine a half? Um, so we already did that earlier. And the answer is that sine is a half at um, pi over six plus two pi k or five pi over six plus two pi k. That was the first example we did. Um, so that's what the inside must be because that's what the angle needs to be. Whatever the whole thing is inside is the angle to make sine be a half. So the inside we set equal to these two things um, separately. So the idea is that if the inside of sine is this, then the result will be a half. So I'm going to set the inside, which was this guy, pi over 12x, equal to um, what the angle needs to be to give you one half. And then I can solve this for x with algebra. Um, so how do I solve this guy for x? I just multiply by 12 and also divide by pi on both sides and then x will be alone. So what will I get? I'll get x equals, so I'm going to multiply by 12 and I'm going to divide by pi on everything. And what's going to happen? Well, you have to distribute it to both. And that's the only thing to be careful of. So the 12 over 6 becomes 2. The pi's cancel. Um, over here, you get 24. The pi's cancel. And then you get k. Um, so that's your first set of solutions. So then you also set your other angle equal to pi over 12x because the in, that's the inside. And then you do the same thing. So it works exactly the same. You multiply by 12 over pi on both sides to get rid of it on the left. And what happens? You get two here times five, sorry, two times five gives you 10. The pi's will cancel. Um, and then over here you get 24, again, 24K. Okay, so that's, those are your two sets of solutions for X. And again, the whole point is you just set the inside, whatever the inside is, you set that equal to what you need it to be. Um, so, I'm going to just do another example like that real quick and show you the same idea. So how about this? Solve 2 cosine of 2x equals root 3. Um, okay, so again, what we need to do is isolate the cosine. But you can't isolate just cosine of x because that 2x is stuck in there. So you got to isolate the whole thing. Um, and so how do I do that? I just divide by this outside 2. You can't do anything with the inside. That 2x is stuck in there. 
all you can do is divide by this two on the outside on both sides. And then after that, it's exactly the same as the previous problem, which is find when um, cosine is root three over two. And when is that? Root three over two for x, that's gonna be pi over six. And also, um, what is this? 11 pi over six. So because that's when cosine is root three over two, you need to consider the two x. So what it really means is you need the angle to be either of these two angles. So whatever the inside is, is what you need to set equal to these angles. So then we set two x because that's what's inside of cosine equal to one of them plus two pi k because all the other rotations also work. And then you also do this one. And then how do I solve for x? Well, in both cases, I just have to divide by two. x equals pi over 12 plus pi k, divide by two on the entire thing. And then same thing here, x equals um, 11 pi over 12 plus pi k. Okay, so let's see, does it get any trickier than that? That's pretty much as much as there is. Let's see if I could try to trick you here. How about this one? Uh, pi over four X equals negative one. The only difference here is that this negative one means there's only gonna be one set of answers because cosine When is the x value negative one? It's all the way at the end of the circle. So that just happens at pi. So you're just gonna set the inside equal to pi plus two pi k. Because pi works, but then so does any other rotation of pi. But there's only one set of answers because there's no other way to get negative one. Like in the previous problems, there's always two angles that get you the right answer but not here. There's just one angle and that's pi. Um, so then solving for it is very quick. So multiply by four over pi on both sides to cancel things and you'll, you'll be done. Let's see, four plus eight K. Okay, next type of tricky problem is extra tricky. If you haven't thought about this stuff, what about this? Well, this one has no solution, but why? Well, ask yourself, when is sine equal to negative eight? What angle makes that happen? Well, there's no angle because what's going on is sine is the Y value on the unit circle. And that goes up to negative one right here. So if negative eight is way up here, when will the y value ever reach negative eight? It won't. So there's no angle. There's no angle that makes sine be negative eight. Oh, sorry, negative eight is down. I don't know why I wrote, wrote it up there. Negative one, same idea, but flip it upside down, down here. Um, so it won't ever be negative eight. It'll only go down to negative one at the most. So no angle will make sine be negative eight. So there's no solution. Trickier, but easier. Once you get it, you don't have to do any work. You just, that's it, no solution. All right, um, what else? Okay, so here is the trickiest, I think, that it can be. I have to pause, I'm really hungry. One second, I'm gonna eat a bite of a burrito and then I'll come back. Okay, so this is the next problem. And why does it look different? It's because we got this square here. So that makes it a little bit harder because it's not just like, when is this trig angle equal to this number? It's a lot different. And 
it's kind of hard to see what to do until I just reveal the trick. So I'm just going to reveal it right away. So the trick is to think about it like this. What if I asked you, what if we were doing something like this? Y, 2y squared plus y equals 0. How would you solve that? You would factor it or use the quadratic formula if factoring didn't work. And you would get this. And then you would say, aha, y equals 0 or 2y plus 1 equals 0. So y equals negative a half. And that's how you would solve it. Well, this is actually the same problem. It's the same thing. Because you still have 2 times something squared plus that same something. So you can still think about it as just using y as your sine of x. So then this factors the same way. So I factor out a sine of x, and I still get the same thing. Same idea, where when you have multiplication set equal to 0, that tells you that you can set in each piece individually equal to 0. And that's all you got to do. So then now it's the same as the before, but just two problems in one. So then for the first guy, when is sine zero? So that's the height being zero. So that's here and also here. So the angles are zero and pi. So x equals 0 plus 2 pi k and x equals pi plus 2 pi k. Um, and then here, this other equation, so that gives you two sets of answers. Now we're going to get two more sets. So here is just like the other problems. So first, get the trig function alone by subtracting 1 dividing by 2, and then asking yourself when is sine negative a half. That's at these two pi over 6 angles. So x equals um, 7 pi over 6 is this one. And then this is 11 pi over 6. So now we just get more answers. But it's the same question as before, except it's two of them after the first step, which is factoring. So really, the only new thing is factoring. And then it's just doing the same question twice. Um, OK, so I'll do one more for you like this. Because it looks a little bit harder, because now I got sines and cosines mixed up. And there is a square. So this one has one extra step, which is you need all of the same type of trig function, typically. And in this case, what I can do is I could use that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 to tell me that that sine squared, I can solve for it. And then I could change everything into cosine squareds instead. So that's one thing I can do. So I'm going to plug that in there. That way, I only have cosines. And then it'll work just like last time. So I get 2 minus 2 cosine squared of x minus cosine of x equals 1. Let's move everything to one side. So move everything to the right just to get rid of negatives and set it equal to 0. And what do I get? I get 2 cosine squared plus cosine. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And again, you just think of it as each as cosine being another variable. So then you could see it as a quadratic 
that you might remember how to factor or you might not. Um, and if you don't, then you can use the quadratic formula. So if I use the quadratic formula here, let's see, I get y equals negative one plus or minus the square root of b squared is one squared minus four times two times negative one over two times two, two a, negative one plus or minus square root of, let's see, what is that, one plus eight over four, negative one plus or minus square root of nine over four, negative one plus or minus three over four. So I get these two answers here. Y equals negative one plus three, divide that by four, or Y equals negative one minus three, divide that by four. So what do we get? What's negative one plus three? That's two over four, which is a half, or negative one. So y was just a placeholder for cosine. So really, then you switch it back to cosine of, I think I was using x, or right? So let me change it to x, not theta, sorry. So now, change that to back to x, back to cosine of x. And now I'm in the same situation as last time, which is I just solved these two things. So when is cosine a half? That's at um, pi over three, it's two pi k, or um, five pi over three. Hopefully you're used to drawing these pictures. So here's a half, it's the high angles. So it's the pi over three angles. And then over here, when is cosine negative one? That's just at pi. So that's why you get those three answers. Okay, so then um, I'll leave you with this one that I won't do, but just to warn you what else could happen. is something like this. So when you have mixed up trig functions, you just have to change them. So if you just change tangent to sine over cosine, then this becomes a bit more doable. Um, although it is a little bit tricky. So you don't actually want to cancel the, um, signs because then you lose solutions. So instead, what you have to do is multiply the cosine over, get everything to one side, and then factor. But you do not want to just cancel the signs because what happens then is you lose solutions that actually exist. I don't know why I put a three there. That three is gonna not be good later. So let's just change that three. Let's change that to a two. Just to make, make everything work better. Sorry about that. So then now in this situation, I didn't want to change everything to sines or cosines because that would have been really hard to do without having a square. So instead what I did was realize that if I bring everything to one side, it'll still factor out nicely. And then I can just set each factor equal to zero. So this one's a bit trickier. Sorry, I said I wasn't gonna do this one, but then I did anyway, got carried away. So you set each factor equal to zero, and now it's just like before. So when is sine zero? That's at the zero angle, or the pi angle plus rotations, and then this guy, you gotta get cosine alone, and you're asking when is cosine a half again? We just did that one. That's pi over three, that's two pi k, or five pi over three. Okay, so that's it for today. No daily problem. Um, you should just work on the homework.
Okay, see you next time.